Welcome everyone. We'll give it one more minute before we introduce just so that some latecomers join. I'm seeing some friends here too. Folks, um, turn on your cameras. We like seeing your faces. We miss our community. Um, be a part of this and uh, um, hopefully that helps a little bit. Hey, Chloe. Jimmy, there's another Jimmy here. <laughs> Okay, folks, I think we're going to get started. My name is Isaac Zablocki. I'm director of the Other Israel Film Festival. Welcome to this special Arabic lesson coming to you from the Other Israel Film Festival. Um, thanks to our amazing partners who are really one of our founding partners, the Abraham Fund Initiatives. Um, please check out all of our upcoming programs if you haven't participated. Yes, we also show films too, not just um, Arabic lessons. Um, and this evening we have two programs at 5 p.m. We have the conversation for the film A Common Goal, which is about um, Muslim and Arab players at uh, in Israel's national soccer team. And um, what's amazing is, is just today, Beitar Jerusalem, the leading Israeli soccer team, or one of the leading Israeli soccer teams, um, um, was sold, 49% of it was sold to the Arab Emirates, creating even more of the chaos that I think, I think this will just add more to the conversation we'll have tonight for a common goal at 5 p.m. And then at 7 p.m., the film um, Mayor, which was just released uh, theatrically in Film Forum, um, we're going to have that conversation that's going to be led by the forward. So please join us for that and more throughout the week. Um, uh, many more programs till Thursday night. Um, I'm going to hand things over now to Jimmy Tabor, who is director of the Abraham Fund Initiatives here in the U.S., um, to take it from here and to introduce the program. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, Jesse. Um, it's really great to see so many familiar faces and new folks. I'm excited. We're, Maya and myself, we're very excited to be here. Um, we are a proud partner of the festival. We've been partners for, for many, many years, and this is always a highlight of the year for us. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just tell you a little bit about the Abraham Initiatives, um, a little bit about why we're here, and then I'll throw it over to Maya, and we can start learning Arabic together. Um, so the Abraham Initiatives were one of the oldest and largest organizations in Israel that's working towards a shared and equal society for uh, Jewish and Arab citizens. So we work within the Green Line, all with Israeli citizens. Um, and our work focuses on the areas of education, equal representation, and equitable service delivery. Um, and that within that, for us, one of the keys to building a shared society in Israel is shared language. And the possibility of, shared, of developing a shared language to open each other up to each other's cultures. Um, so I'm really with you, with Mai Aro, who's our Director of Arabic as a Cultural Bridge, which is a project that you're going to get a little bit of a taste of actually how it works. This is the same thing that we want to run in Israel, although when we run in Israel, it's over a much longer period of time. Um, but basically, this is a program that we run to teach introductory Arabic to influential Jewish Israelis as a way to give them a first window into Arab culture and society in Israel. So we run this project in different newsrooms in Israel, with television, radio, print. Um, we also run it in the mixed cities for mayors and city council members. Um, and we also run it for academic staff in the universities as a way for, for folks to be able to start to develop a shared language and a shared access to culture. Um, so what you're getting tonight, our goal tonight is not for you to learn Arabic. I don't want anyone to be disappointed if you're not fluent at the end of tonight, today. But what we want you to leave with is the desire to learn more. Um, and we run these, we run three day courses and folks who complete that, we extended seven more weeks to get you fully through introductory Arabic. So if you like what you um, continue to learn. So um, as we go along, you're probably gonna have questions. Just uh, toss them in the chat box for me. And uh, when we get to about 45 minutes in, 
we will go ahead and uh, do what my Jimmy, بفكر إنه ولا واحد سامعك. No one can hear you. I hope. أفكر إنه المشكلة عندي أو عندك. I would like to think the problem is your internet, not mine. مش مشكلتي. Um, أنا بعرف إنه في هون كم واحد بيحكوا عربي. I do know that some of you probably try to learn Arabic before. صح؟ في شوي واحد بيحكي شوي بكتب بقرأ. Yeah, yeah. I can see the smile. ممتاز. Um, I will ignore you, basically, and we will do like a beginner درس للمتحليم للي ما بيعرفوا عربي, okay? But here and there I use Arabic. Some will be, uh, will feel very uncomfortable عشان أنا ما بترجم. I usually don't translate. I jump من عربي لعبراني لإنجليزي, okay? But it's fun. هذا إشي حلو. Trust me. Okay. So, Ismi May, my name is May. Ismi May, and I'm in Jet. Jet, somewhere between Haifa and Yafa. Yafa, Tel Aviv, Jaffa, and Haifa is Haifa. Um, I'm 39 years old, Kaman Sani, Kaman Shwai, 40, and I've been teaching Arabic my whole life. And I invited my English teacher to watch. She's right here with you. Yes, shukran Sharon. Well, I'll do whatever I can do and you can fix it later. Um, <laughs> 15 years ago, I started my career as a language teacher. At the beginning, I couldn't find a job as Malmet Arabi, Waibrani, an Arabic and a Hebrew teacher. I couldn't find a job. So um, um, too many Arab teachers, the, the Jewish schools have a problem, they needed teachers. I went there and I became an Arabic teacher at an elementary school. I had no experience at all. I was only about 24, 25 years, years. And I remember that nothing from my knowledge and anything that I knew couldn't help me. The first week was so difficult because the kids are used to meet Arabs, not as their teacher, not as some khut. They are, they knew how to count. When I asked them to give me names in Arabic, they gave me very old names. I, I couldn't understand why, Lish. Later I realized I used to work at Zichron Yaakov, Zumarin. So it's, um, it's a rich place. In every bit, they have a helper, an Arabic cleaner. Okay, so they knew how to count. They knew their names, which are usually old, older than me, of course. And it was very difficult to tell the teacher, I'm your teacher. Okay, I had no kids, no experience with kids, and even using a few words in Hebrew was a big mistake. It's like when I say die instead of must speak, a very small thing. It took me some time to realize what should I say. The first big mistake was to ask them if they speak Arabic, do you know Arabic? I said, and I and they raised their little hands. And they said all of the bad words in Arabic that I can't even imagine me as a teacher. Yes, <laughs> that was the last time I checked if Yehud Behku Arabi. I felt so bad. I, I thought they, they, they are saying that to me. I, and it took me some time to realize it's not a big deal to say it in Hebrew. It's not like, it's not a conservative religious culture and society like where I came from. Okay, it's a history now. I had a great time, five years, after that, I became a Hebrew teacher at Arab school, a different experience. Very interesting. I want to elaborate now, maybe next time. Why am I teaching Arabic and Hebrew? 
and why am I working with culture all the time? How important it is to understand the story behind the words and when to use this or that, or that. A few years ago, one of my students, um, a Jewish young man who used to work at the hospital uh, at the afternoon came to me and told me that Every time he asks the visitors to open their bags, he couldn't uh, not notice how uncomfortable felt the Arab visitors. So he asked everyone and he told me um, about it. And he asked if I can help, if there is anything that he can do to make them feel comfortable. And I said, yes, of course, use two words, kilimtain, law samahet, and then shukran. Law samahet means if you please, law samahet. You can after that continue in Hebrew, in English, never mind, but law samahet, please, if you please, bevakasha. And shukran, which is thank you, shukran. Now, I can't hear you, but I can see you, and it's important for anyone who it's the first time you listen to those words, say it, repeat it. Kulu, law samahet. Shukran, 76 people from now on. If you want to ask any Arab man or woman to say something, to do something, say law samahet, law samahet. And after that, shukran, shukran. Thank you, Daniela, kull al ihtiram. Well done, kull al ihtiram. Okay, so uh, he left. And when he came back, he said, unbelievable, my, it works. They even smile now. It gave me motivatia, motivation to do what I'm doing. He was very lazy. I could hardly teach him, but he remembered to do what I asked him to do. And by the end of the course, at the end of the course, he came to me again with another question. He said, I asked one of the um, construction workers to move his tools from one place to another, though I used law samahet and shukran, as you taught me, yet he was very nervous. He left angry, and I don't know what the problem is. It's a real story. And I smiled and I said immediately, how old is the man? And he said, I don't know, about 50. Well, he is bigger, older than you. And there is a proper way to speak with someone who a bit older in my society, in my culture. I'll give you now, all of you, a magical word, an expression that you can use to interrupt anyone, to ask anyone for help. And it always work, no matter where. You should say, "Yatik el afie." Yatik el afie. Yatik el afie means three things. If I want to translate it, it give you health. This is the translation. Letetlecha breut, which is of course God will give you health. I'm, I'm saying. But it means much more than that. It means I can see you're busy and I'm asking for your attention and I'm wishing you help. All of that when you say So there is no way in my culture, a very conservative religious culture that you say that to someone and he will not answer, listen, stop what he's doing and help you try it. I do it all the time. If I want to ask for direction or I have any question, I immediately start with for a man or a woman, the same. Try. Thank you. It's weird, but that's what we can do with Zoom. <laughs> okay. Now, since we have on, on, only half an hour, I will take you with me and I will explain a few things. I can see the questions you're already asking. Are we, are we going to learn how to read or to write? 
what dialect, uh, classical Arabic or spoken language. So we will watch together two very, very short uh, videos. This is the first. Marhaba. In Arabic, there are 28 letters. The Arabic script is written from right to left. Here, on the panel, you can see that there are letters which look very similar to each other. You can tell the difference between them because of dots called diacritical marks. For example, this is the letter ba, and this is the letter ta. The difference between them is that the letter ba has a dot beneath the letter, whilst ta has two dots above. In this course, we will learn to read Arabic in chunks. In each section, we will learn a number of letters and at the same time, we will learn to read whole words. We will learn the letters in a comfortable and easy order rather than the order of the Arabic alphabet. There are three rules which we will now meet. They will help you as we encounter the letters. The first rule, Arabic letters are joined to each other. For example, here we have the name Muhammad. It is not possible to write in Arabic without joining the letters. The second rule, there are six letters which do not join to the letter that follows them. For example, here we have the name Sara. It contains four letters, Sin, Alif, Ra, Alif. We see the letter Sin and afterwards the letter Alif, which are joined. But after the letter Alif, the joining stops. Let's look again at the name Sara. We see also that the letter Ra is not joined to the letter which follows it. The third rule, let's have another look at our panel of letters. We see all 28 letters of the Arabic alphabet in their separate or full form. This is the form of the letter when it is not joined or if it is at the end of a word. When the letter is joined, its form is shortened. For example, this is the letter sin in its separate form. However, when it is connected to an alif, as in Sara, the letter looks like this. Keep these rules in mind as we now jump in and get started. Okay, stop and an explanation. First, um, remember, if you have any question, please write your question on the chat and I will try to answer as many as I can. We have 15 minutes of questions at the end. Second, we will not learn, not now or not later, to read and write. It's very easy to read and write. You can sit in front of the computer and do it by yourself, really. What I'm going to teach you right now is a bit to speak, to talk, and culture, of course. And I'm using the Bilango. It's a site. I use it because I wrote it, wrote this material. So I'm very familiar with that. You can hear me and listen to my voice here and there. Okay, I will show you one more short video about uh, dialects and about the difference between Fusha and Ami, the classical Arabic, and uh, each is one, um, about two minutes, even less, and then I will explain more. What's important for me before that is, I forgot, wait, what I wanted to say. Um, this is what happens. Yeah, I know what I want to say. This is what happens when we use the fourth language. I speak Arabic, the spoken, the Fusha, almost another language, then Hebrew, Ibrani, then English. Okay? <laughs> so, my name, I wanted to say something about my name. In Arabic, my name is May. May. It's two letters, Mim and Ya. May. It means water. So if you know to say, I want, biddi, I want, and you need water, biddi, my, biddi, my, my name. It's very important. You might need it one day. It's going to be the only word that might save your lives. May. In Hebrew, it's M A mim alef yud, my, the same in English. If I write mem yud, they will call me me. They won't realize what it means. So I write it with Alif. I was born on May. But in Arabic, May is a yar, like in Hebrew, a yar. It's not May, 
it's not my. And one more thing about the uh, very important thing about the uh, months in Arabic, the month. If you ask someone um, when is his birthday and it takes him a second to answer if his English is not very good, it's because he we say the number. So in Arabic, I would say I was born on the fifth, five. But I do know you won't understand, so I need to say January, February, and then I'll tell you. Okay? So we say I was born في خمسة تناش. Sorry, تناش, the twelfth of May. تناش خمسة بش نمسر لخمشي. Okay. لحظة. لحظة means one second. I'll take you with me and I will explain about the difference between Fusha and Ammiye. Yes. Marhaba. Marhaba means hello. The Arabic language is special. It has a spoken variety and a formal literary variety. Literary or modern standard Arabic is common to all Arabic speakers worldwide. It is used mainly in the news, in official documents, lectures, and other formal occasions. However, Spoken Arabic is used actively in every sphere of life. In social media, film, interviews, songs, modern literature, and of course, in everyday interactions between all kinds of people. Filango will teach you spoken Arabic, which is the foundation of all communication. Spoken Arabic is the native language of Arabs worldwide, and it's the language in which people think. Okay. Okay. Welcome. So we will learn spoken, not uh, classical Arabic. But it's important to say that if you go anywhere in the Arab world, if you speak the classical Arabic, they all will understand you. You will sound weird. We will laugh a little bit. We will feel un uncomfortable because it's a very high, okay? It's, it's a very high, it's like you're like a book right now or the news, but yet we will understand. We might find it difficult to answer, but we all will understand. So if I go and when I go, and speak to my friends from Morocco, Algeria. Um, I, it's very easy to use the classical Arabic and they all understand. If you want to see the difference, if you speak Hebrew, um, if I say Ani, if I say Anuchi, you will understand, but you will say, why? <laughs> But this is the difference between Fusha and Ammiye, okay? This is the difference. But what can you do? When we speak, it's like a slang. It's called, we think at the spoken language. You need to learn to speak, first of all, okay? All right. Now, one more thing, and then we will start with examples. About Lahjat, the dialect. Marhaba means hello. Arabic dialects can be split in very broad terms into four kinds. Bilango teaches the Middle Eastern dialect of Arabic. This dialect is spoken throughout Palestine, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, and Israel. 
This dialect is known as Levantine Arabic. It is very easy to learn other dialects if you know Levantine Arabic. It is also the easiest dialect to learn if you already have some knowledge of modern standard Arabic. Okay. Now come with me, Hun. Can you all see? Thanks. So في العامية, the spoken Arabic language, which can also uh, called محكية. محكية or عامية. I will introduce myself and I'll say مرحبا, which is hello. مرحبا. اسمي مي. My name is مي. اسمي مي. أنا ساكنة في جف. أنا ساكنة, not ساكن. جارة بلو جار. Since I'm a female. أنا بحكي عربي. Either as a man or a woman, both would say أنا بحكي عربي. بحكي, I speak. أنا بحكي عربي. Try to repeat after me or with me. I can't hear you anyway. مرحبا. اسمي, say your name. It's not my name. اسمي. أنا ساكن or ساكنة في. أنا بحكي عربي. أنا بحكي عربي. Now notice the different, the فصحى, the classical Arabic. مرحبا is مرحبا. مرحبا is مرحبا. اسمي is the same. شمي. My name. شمي. أنا ساكن في. أسكن في. أسكن. Instead of أنا بحكي عربي. أنا أتحدث or أتكلم العربية. أنا أتحدث or أتكلم العربية. So what actually you can see here? If you say مرحبا or مرحبا, it's not a problem. It's not a big different. Is me the same? أنا ساكني or أسكنو also not a big deal. But there is a difference between بحكي عربي. أنا بحكي عربي and أنا أتكلم or أتحدث العربية. I want to take you and say something about the dialects. It's very easy for me to understand the Middle East. Yani, uh, Suri, Lebanese, from Lebanon, from Syria. It's almost the same dialect. I can understand kul kilme, every word, kul kilme. But if I go to Yemen or Algeria, Al Jazair or Al Maghrib. I can understand only 50% of what they are saying. 50% half, nos, because of two things. It's very different, their dialect, and also because they use French, which I'm not familiar with. The same phenomenon, the same thing happens when Palestinians from Israel go to uh, study at Jordan universities. They, without noticing, use Hebrew here and there. At the beginning, the Jordanian couldn't understand. Now, if you go, you will realize the Jordanian speak a bit Hebrew because of us. They run away from psychometry and because it's very difficult sometimes to be accepted to university. In Jordan, it, you need, it costs more money, but it's a bit more easy. Then uh, they take their Hebrew there with them. After one or two, three years, when they come back, you can hear a little bit English there instead of the Hebrew. The Egyptian uh, dialect is a very beautiful dialect. It's not easy, but all of us understand it because if the film, well, it's a film festival, so you'll understand. Because of the films, the film industry, it comes to all of our houses. We all understand Egyptian dialect. And of course, now everyone is talking about Al Imarat. It's more like the Fusha, the Fusha, the classical Arabic of Al Quran. And instead of Ka, they say Cha. So, Kif Halik, how are you? Kif Halik, they will say Chief Halik, Chief. It's easy to understand. The problem is actually when you meet friends from Algeria or Morocco, there's no way to understand. I'll show you. I have an example here. 
the simple uh, sentence. I speak Arabic. Anna bahki Arabi or bahchi. The ka sometimes becomes cha. Anna bahki or bahchi Arabi. Egypt. Anna betkellem Arabi. Betkellem. Al Emirat, Dubai, Al Kuwait. Anna atakellem or ahchi Arabi. And في الجيريا or اليمن it's much more difficult to understand notice انا كنهدر or كندوي بالعربي you, you just won't understand we don't know these two words it's much easier for us to understand بحكي بتكلم بتحدث كنهدر كندوي a bit difficult شوي صعب so the solution is to speak Fusha. Speak Fusha. They all can read and write. Okay. Let's talk about coffee and I will stop sharing and I will say something about coffee before that. Kahwe. Coffee. Kahwe. One very nice and funny thing happens when Arab and Jews talk about coffee. When I go to a um, Jewish friend and she asks, now I feel more confident by the age of 39 to say what I want. But for years, when she asks, a chuta cafe? Or is it cafe a chuta? Do, do you want coffee? This is the first problem. We don't ask. If I come to you, you're not supposed to ask. So when you ask, I, I feel a bit confused. In my culture, you just bring the coffee. So what, what do you mean by asking? Should I say yes or no? It's the first time someone asked me if I want coffee. After that, previous knowledge. I know our coffee is different. <laughs> now, in my culture, you're not supposed to tell your friend how or what to do in his house. You just accept what he brings and drink it. It's not polite to say, I want this or that. There, were, there is no way for us to tell you, boil it. it it's just not gonna happen. You may not even have the right finjan to do it or ghalai. So this tricky question, do you want coffee with the qahwa? If I said yes, I know what will happen. You will bring me something you call coffee. For me, it's ah, I don't know how to call it. Now I'm even polite and I have to drink it. There is no good way to get out of it. Maybe I start asking, do you have espresso? It's better. I want to explain now the differences between some of my friends who are familiar with this would immediately say, we boil it too. <laughs> I have qahwa arabi if you want. Okay, so be careful with this question. Have a sual. Now let me take you to see how we say it. Qahwe. The Arabic classical is qahwe. Qa, ha, waw, ya. Qahwe. You can also say qahwa. Qahwe and qahwa, both right. Qahwe or Qahwa? In, in, wow, it's here, <laughs> I'm not gonna say in Palestine, not in Israel. Here, different dialects from different places, you can hear the word Qahwe different. Some will say Kahwe, Kahwe, Ka, and not, not Qa. And some would say Ahwe. The qa becomes a, and the bid will say, the Bedouin will say, gahwe. Okay, so it's three different, four different ways to say coffee. Repeat after me and try to listen. The right one that works everywhere is qahwe. Kahwe. Ahwe. Gahwe. Tamam? Okay. 
And remember what I told you about water, my, may, my name. If you want to say, I want water, biddi qahwe, biddi mai. So biddi means I want. Now also, you can ask in a polite way now. You know, to say, you can say, لو سمحت, لو سمحت, if you please, لو سمحت, بدي قهوة, لو سمحت, بدي شاي, tea, لو سمحت, بدي مي, water, لو سمحت. Okay, let's make your lives more difficult. مرحبا بانسر مرحبتين مرحبتين means شلوم شلوم hello hello so if I have one kid one boy I have ولد if I want to say I have two ولدين the en means twice so مرحبا hello مرحبتين hello hello it's the answer do you have one kid and the walad? You want to say no, no, two. So you say waladin, waladin. One day means yom, like in Hebrew, yom. Two days, yomen, yomen. Yeah, and noon means twice. So marhaba, marhabtin. If you forgot, you can say marhaba. It's fine. Shu ismik or شو اسمك؟ What's your name? شو اسمك؟ شو اسمك؟ The answer اسمي and you say your name. After that, we will, I will choose one of you and I will ask the questions. Okay, so listen to me and try to answer. شو اسمك؟ شو اسمك؟ وين انت ساكنة؟ افو اتقارة The H وين انت ساكنة؟ Or وين انت ساكن؟ Second, like in Hebrew, shuchen. Second, shuchen. Very similar. It means live. Where do you, where you live? When in second, where you live? Where you live for to a man and or a woman? Ana sakni fi, or ana sakin fi. Btihki Arabi. Do you speak Arabic? Btihki Arabi. You can say aywa. Yes or la la. It's not la. It's la. Ana bahki Arabi or Ana ma bahki Arabi ma bahki bahki ma bahki. Okay, let me unmute someone. Mean mean mean. Yeah, this is the time to run away because I will choose someone. And of course, I rather, David, let me try to unmute you. I saw your smile. Never smile if you want the teacher, you know, with the, with the minute someone smile or move, stand the peace team and teachers, it happens. Marhaba, David. Um, I can't hear you. Are you muted? How are you? <laughs> Ready? Hmm? Ready? Ready? Want to try? Sure. So we said marhaba. I said marhaba. You said marhabtin. Marhaba, marhabtin. Shu is mak. Ismi Dawood. Oh, in Arabic, David, Dahood. My uncle's name is Dahood. Okay. Dahoud, David. When in Tisakin? In a second for New York. Okay, I'll make it more difficult for you. A question that's not written there. When Nualadit? Do you speak Hebrew? If you do, Nualadit will be for you. Ask again. If you speak Hebrew, no. when I say when Nualadit, it's when, it's right. where. Waladet like in Hebrew, Noladeta. Mm -hmm. Where was you born? Yes. Where did Waladet? Fi New York? Uh, yes. Iowa. Fi New Iowa. York. Okay. Btihki Arabi? La, and a la Arabi. 
أنا ما بحكي عنه ما Okay. You're doing the dialect. <laughs> I know. Um, another one more question. كمان سؤال. بتحكي بتحكي إبراني إبرو. لا أنا ما بحكي إبراني. Yes, I don't speak Hebrew. ما بحكي إبراني. If you want to say a little bit. You should say, you should say, shwai, shwai, bit. Shwai? Shwai abrani? Shwai, yeah, shwai abrani. Arabi, la, shwai abrani. Thank you, David, shukran, David. How do you say if someone- Afwan. Yes, exactly. Afwan, afwan, which is a, one. Afwan. You will not forget that. Afwan, the answer, when someone says shukran, you should say afwan, afwan, okay? Afwan, ya mai. Let me choose me and Daniela. Yalla, iftahi, iftahi el mic. Open your microphone. I did. Marhaba. Is me Daniela? Written, now you should say marhabtain. What? Oh, marhabtain. Again, marhaba. Mahatem. Who is Mac? Is me Daniela. Hmm, Daniela. When it is Sakni? Um. Where do you live? Where it is Sakni? Oh. Sakni, Phoenix. Aha. Anna Sakni, Fi. Give me the whole sentence. I live. Anna. Sakni Phoenix? Uh-huh. Fee Phoenix. Fee Phoenix. Fee Phoenix. Hello, beautiful. Bdihka Arabi? La. La. Tell me, I don't speak Arabic. Anna? Anna? Ma Bakri Arabi. I'll make it bigger. Now it's more clear, right? La. Anna ma bakhki Arabi. Very good, very good. Shukran, Daniela. If I say shukran, what should you say? Whatever you just did there. <laughs> Which is af, no, af, af one. Af one. Yes. Af one. <laughs> Ma salame. Thank you. Okay, let's do, let's give you another word. They ask the question, how are you? It's kif halak or kif halik. Kif halak, kif halik. Kif means how. When I teach it to people who speak Hebrew, they want to say mashlumcha. Kif is not mashlumcha. I immediately use English. It's how are you? Kif is how. So if you want to ask someone how, kif, kif. Kif halak. Kif halik, the three answers that I want to teach, not three, five answers I want to teach you today is excellent, mumtaz, or mumtaze, if you're a woman, mabsut, happy, mabsuta, if you're a woman, ta'ban, or ta'bane, alhamdulillah, thank God, and yani, tamam? Say it, please. Kif halak? Kif halik? Mumtaz? Mabsut? Ta'ban? Alhamdulillah? Yani? Ryoko? Is that your name? You are unmuted now. Actually, my name is Takemi. I borrowed my mother's iPad. Uh, my mother is, is Ryuko, but I'm Takemi. Okay, as well, let's ask you again in Arabic. Shu uh, ismek? Ismi Takemi. When in Tisakne? Where do you live? When in Tisakne? Anasakne fi New York. Kif Halik. How are you? Kif Halik. Mumtazi. 
Oh, Montaze. Thank you. Shukran. If you want to say I'm not great, you should remember the apricot. In Hebrew, it's mishmish. Mishmish mm-hmm. means not not. So if I ask you, are you a Muslim? And you want to say, I'm not Muslim. It's enough to say, I'm not. And a mish. And a mish. And a mish. Okay, so are you, do you live in... Um, do you live in Israel? Uh, no, 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 because it's not, I'm not, I don't, it's different, sorry. So let's continue with the mish. Are you Tabani, tired? Tell me your, I'm not tired. Anna? Uh, Anna mish. Yes, Anna mish Tabani. Anna mish Tabani. Again. Inti Tabani? Anna mish Tabani. Inti Mabsuta? That's happy? Yes. Uh, Iwa, Anna Mapsuta. Very good. Thank you. Shukran. Afwan. Okay. Hi, everyone. 45 minutes. What can we learn in Arabic in 45 minutes? In 45 If you remember to say shukran, thank you, to say lo samahit, when you ask someone, anyone, when you approach someone, لو سمحت, and to say, يعطيك العافية, when you want to ask someone for help or anything, I remind you, it means, I see you're busy, I wish you help, and I need your help, I need your attention. يعطيك العافية. If you remember these three things, I'm satisfied. أنا مبسوطة. أنا مبسوطة. It's not the end. It's never the end, and I will <laughs> probably see you again, and we, we will do much more than uh, 45 minutes. But I would like to see if you have any questions. So, Jimmy, can you help me? Saidni? Absolutely. Um, and just to build off what Mai just said, we're going to follow up with everyone. And if folks are interested in continuing, let us know, and we'll find a class to plug you into so we can keep learning together. So um, if you have any questions, pop them in the chat. I, I'm gonna start by, Daniela mentioned that when she was young in the high school at, in Israel, Arabic was required as a class. And I know you've been involved in bringing spoken Arabic into the, the Jewish schools in Israel. And I was wondering if you could tell everyone a little bit about what the state of Arabic is in the Jewish schools. Yes, of course, Taban. Um, you can actually live and die without really need Arabic here, unfortunately. Um, but at school, you learn Arabic as a compulsory, does it, is it the right, a compulsory subject for three years only, okay? At the eighth, the seventh, the eighth and the ninth grade, that's all. What we did in the Abraham initiatives is to add about 200 uh, elementary schools, our schools, our teachers that learned the spoken language, the Arabic spoken language, and not read and write, okay, not read and write and the Arabic, the, the Arabic classical of Al Quran. Um, it was it was great because the kids love it, and later they arrived the seventh grade and, and unfortunately they knew more than their teachers because the Jewish teachers knew the materials that written on the book to read and write. And when the kids arrived with a spoken language, they told them, now put it aside and let's learn to read and write. It was very difficult. It's still very difficult. Uh, we believe that if you want to learn the language, you should learn it from a teacher who speaks this as a native. We, we, we do not only learn Arabic, we learn the culture behind all the time. Instead of talking about them, let's talk about me, my culture, my house. It's not easy at all. The fact that there are so many Arab teachers that looking for a job it doesn't mean that the Jewish schools will say, Ahlan wa Sahlan, come. Okay, it's a bit more complicated and they even afraid of doing that step because no one actually uh, teaches you how to teach in different culture. 
And I remember my first year as a very, very difficult year. I used to come back home crying. The only, um, the only reason I stayed there is because I couldn't find a job in Arab schools. And only the next year, when I became more confident, I start enjoying them. And I had a great time after, but the first year is difficult. A lot of Arab teachers try and then run away, disappear as the Jewish principles uh, describe. Because in my culture, you feel very uncomfortable to say, I don't, I can't do it. Help me. I, I don't have the right experience. Then they just disappear. And it makes the Jewish principles crazy because they don't even know what happens to the teacher. She just doesn't answer the phone calls. It's complicated. We're trying to change this, um, uh, this uh, reality, but it won't happen uh, very soon. So, so Judy asked the question, can you really teach a language without writing? Can how, what? Can you really teach a language without writing? How do you, how can you teach spoken without oh, writing? Because it's so okay. different than how we're used to learning language. Important, thank you. It's an important question, why? Because when I teach here, in Israel, Jewish people, I don't use bilango. I use safa achat. I write the word safa and number one. It's, it's the same material, but it's the original site. And because of the fact that a lot want to speak, but don't want to read and write, and they rather to see a Hebrew letters, Arabic language, Hebrew letters, we call it tatik. We have it all in tatik. So you can actually learn to read and write without learning, sorry, to speak without learning the letters. When we did the um, international uh, site, Bilango, it's a different place, it's different people and we wanted to do it right. If you respect the language, really, you need to learn the 28 letters. It doesn't mean you learn the high um, classical Arabic. No, but you need at least to recognize the, the letters. So everything there is written in Arabic letters. As you um, know, I haven't, uh, maybe if we do the three intensive days, I will enter the site, but I had no time to show you that today, sorry. But if you go and write Bilango, you will, they will explain everything to you. Before you learn to speak, sit in front of the computer a few times, one week, and you will learn to read and write in Arabic. Then, tfaddalu, welcome, you can learn to speak. If you're a lazy Israeli uh, uh, who speak Hebrew, I want to use that fact, tfaddalu, tu safa achat, you can do it. It works. People can um, easily start speaking because it, the, the languages are very similar to each other, the Hebrew and Arabic. It's amazing how similar they are. They find out very quickly that they understand. It's much easier than if you didn't speak Hebrew. Fadel. <laughs> Very cool. Um, there's just a, a quick question. Nissan asked, you know, when you were explaining Afwan, you're pointing at your nose, and you know, Af is nose in Hebrew. Is there a connection with nose in Arabic too? Or is that just for the Hebrew to remember? In in Arabic, it's and in Hebrew, it's af. This is a good example, but it's one way to remember, that's all. Af, one. <laughs> I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about how teaching introductory Arabic like this works in Israel. I'm thinking specifically in the mixed cities. You know, one of the projects of the Abraham Initiatives has been to address um, a huge opportunity that we found in the mixed cities in Israel which is a couple of years ago, all seven mixed cities in Israel elected city council coalitions that included Arab parties for the first time. So uh, across all the mixed cities, there's now shared political leadership where you have you know, an Akko, a mayor who's from Likud and a deputy mayor from the Islamic party who are now working together. And as an organization, we've sort of prioritized trying to help support these political partnerships. So I'm, I'm curious if you can talk a little bit about the role of Arabic and then maybe give a, an example. I know there's a great story about the mayor of Ramla that, um, that I've been excited about that I'd love to hear yeah. you share with everyone. 
the mayor of Ramle, Michael uh, Vidal, uh, is one of my students. And uh, at the beginning, I remember him saying, I don't speak Arabic, I don't know Arabic. Um, but my mother, his mother is from Morocco and she speaks Arabic. He called it Morocco, it's Arabic. It's a, a, a different dialect. And after the first course, which is 10 times, 10 lessons, they insisted, he and a few uh, of his friends to continue. And they pushed so hard, usually we give another places, different people, um, and they pushed them, they, we gave them another course. And after two courses of spoken Arabic with me, a beautiful thing happened. He decided for the first time in his life to send a voice message, two voice messages in Arabic. And he sent one to the employees at the municipality, um, the workers, and the second to the uh, Arab resident in the mixed city of Ramle. The reactions, the messages they sent him, he was so proud of himself. He kept a uh, screenshot and sending me. They were so, they, they answered for the first time in two languages. They knew he doesn't speak really Arabic and he may not be able to understand or to read, but they wrote in Arabic and then in Hebrew. They translated themselves. How important it is, how proud they are, how much they love him. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. I'm very proud of him. And um, yeah, he finally found out he can actually, it's Arabic. You're, I told him like 10 times, your mother speaks Arabic. You can call it Morocco, Morocco. Shu Morocco, Morocco bihku Arabi. They speak Arabic there. And yeah, it took me some time, but he was an excellent student. Tomorrow we have a conference in Ramle and he will open the um, conference, he will speak, and I will, he doesn't know yet, but I'm supposed to um, introduce him and I will do it in Arabic. <laughs> he will be surprised, but he will laugh because he will understand. It's amazing. And, and that's a, a conference for all the mixed cities, the leaders in all the mixed cities to come together and share and learn, learn together. So. Well, I, I think that's it for us. I'm so grateful for everyone here for, for coming and learning with us. I hope this isn't the last time that we learn together. We're so grateful to, to Carol and Yitzi and the Other Israel Film Festival for providing the opportunity. This is just a wonderful space to be in together. And Mai, thank you so much for, for sharing with us, all of us. We're gonna follow up with you. Please let us know. Um, if you're interested in continuing, there'll be a little survey because you know we haven't done this as a one-off lesson before. So we'd love your feedback to see how we can improve and, and hopefully we'll be able to continue to go. So thank you very much and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you, Mai, and a big thank you to Jimmy and to the Abraham Fund Initiatives um, for their partnership and for this amazing event. Um, and it really elevates our festival. Um, we hope to see you at some more movies starting tonight. We have conversations at five o'clock. This is our last, your last four days to catch the other Israel films and take that much needed break from Netflix. Um, so please join us and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you again. Shukran, Ikwam. Salamat. Shukran, shukran. Bye. Ma'asalam.